Bringer of Light, A New Scientific Romance by Frank W. Junis Of Mice and Men Insinuatio Scientists carried out the following experiment in the second half of the 20th century. Four pairs of mice in perfect health were introduced to an enclosed environment with comfortable temperatures and abundant resources of food, water, and nesting sites, a habitat completely free of predators or dangers of any kind. The mice reproduced prodigiously at first, and their numbers grew into a large population. As time went by, more and more specimens exhibited either unusually violent or apathetic behaviors. Infertility and sexual deviance increased until the death rate exceeded that of the births. Later generations were characterized by aggressive females with low maternal instincts and asocial males that eschewed all activities except for feeding, sleeping, and grooming. Reproduction continued to decline until no more offspring were born. Ultimately, all specimens succumbed to old age. At no point had there been a shortage of food, water, or living space in the habitat, and contagious diseases had never posed a problem. The experiment was repeated several times with variations in the setup, but the end result always remained the same, the demise of the entire population. The Omega Point Epilogue All the tragedies which we can imagine return in the end to the one and only tragedy, the passage of time. Simone Weil I strongly advise against this, said the female voice coolly. We still lack sufficient knowledge about possible pathogens in the planet's atmosphere. A dozen steps from the vault's entrance, the wanderer stopped and lowered his hands again. On the flat top of the nightly mesa, there was little but sand and rock. He turned his head to the side. Are the test mice showing signs of illness? No, not so far, Aura said. But the exposure time was less than a day. It is still too early for a definitive assessment. The wanderer frowned. There is little point in my being on the surface if I can only walk around in a protected suit. Should I fall sick, the disease can be cured. It would be little more than an inconvenience. There is a possibility that you could lose consciousness. I currently have no way of recovering an object the size of a human body. A most unlikely scenario. Unnecessary risks are to be avoided, especially under the given circumstances. The wanderer pursed his lips. No use arguing with a mind engine. Duly noted. He reached up and opened the clasp on the neck of his simple protective suit. After a faint hiss, a warning signal began to chime. Red symbols flashed on his bracelet. He deactivated the alarm with one touch. With his eyes closed, he took off his helmet. The cool air smelled like nightly desert. His lungs welcomed it. A breeze brushed his hair and caressed his skin. He lowered his arm. His left hand let go of the helmet. It fell to the sandy ground, rolled over, and lay still. For a full minute, he enjoyed the sensation of the wind on his face. His eyes remained closed as he spoke again. Still no radio signal? No. None. Neither planetary nor extraplanetary ones. There is no discernible communication of any kind. The wanderer breathed in and out. Nothing but silence. Chemical analysis and spectroscopy had not shown the slightest hint of technological activity either. Reconnaissance drones would eventually begin, certainly, but they needed to be fabricated first. He opened his eyes and looked up. A sea of twinkling stars filled the cloudless sky from horizon to horizon. Only toward the east had their glimmer begun to fade. The sight made a voice stir deep in his mind. It spoke to him. Not in the EU Baron language, but in his mother tongue from so long ago. Oh, sky above me, you pure one, deep one, you little abyss. Gazing upon you, I tremble with divine desires. The Milky Way, that tattered stream of stardust, was the only thing he recognized. All the constellations were utterly alien. I have run far this time, he thought. Too far to follow, even for her. There was a possibility, however, that she had sent an agent of some kind after him. A well-hidden angel of death might already be lying in wait here, preparing to strike at this very moment. His jaw tightened. No point in yielding to such dark thoughts. Hope for the best. Little else could be done. After all, her message had been clear, unless she had lied. In which case, it would be over. He had no more resources for a fight. With him, mankind would perish, for he was the last human being in existence. Hope was all that was left. 
A bright star hung over the red streak of light on the eastern horizon. Daybreak was close. Aura, I want to be alone for a while. Please be quiet unless there is an emergency. Understood. He started walking. The flat top of the mesa was almost devoid of vegetation. Only a few bits of hard shrubbery clung here and there to nooks and crevices. Slowly, he made his way over sand and rocks toward the eastern rim. The night wind kept him company. Now that he was alone, the ghosts of his past came to him like apparitions. All around him, he could see beautiful, smiling faces, their bright eyes full of hope as they looked back at him. Only tricks of his mind, of course. They were all long gone. Nothing remained of them now but memories. Tears welled up in his eyes and ran down his cheeks, hot and wet. My children, how much I have failed you. And you were not even the first I let down. And for one terrible moment, he stared again into the blazing fires of hell and felt the heats of its flames, as he had done in so many nightmares over so many years. My brother, where are you now? At the edge of the mesa, he halted and tamed his breathing. It took an effort to focus on here and now again. His mind had dwelt on thoughts of death. But the sight before him spoke of life. Flying creatures swam against the dawn red of the eastern sky. They looked like birds to his eyes. Below them, a grassy plain stretched out into the distance, dotted with grazing animals of a kind that he could not identify. Like him, they only seemed to be waiting for the day to come. Red radiance spread across the eastern firmament, and the black of the night sky gave way to ultramarine blue. Only the single bright star remained behind as its lesser brethren were blotted out. Patiently, the wanderer watched until the scarlet streak on the horizon had turned to gold. Again, a voice from his past spoke to him in his mother language, but this time, a different one than before. Have faith, it said. Faith in what? He heard his young self ask. Have faith that everything will end well. You were wise, old teacher, but you were wrong. Things did not end well. Now, they are all gone. Only I remain to inhabit this bleak world alone. The wanderer's eyes were on the eastern horizon. As the first glare of the sun touched his face, his lips formed words like a whisper. You great star, what would be your happiness if you had not those for whom you shine? His eyes closed. He tilted his head back and spread his arms wide to embrace the sunlight.